Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and today we have implemented a quest system as you can see at the top left of my screen. I want to show you guys how I made this quest system more or less. So this is a perfect system to showcase how you can tie in more complex systems that's bug free and is very scalable. So let's hop into it. Alrighty, so I'm back in the Myra board here. And the first thing I want to say is that the quest system itself is really basic. In fact, I'm going to show you guys the code here, actually. This is the entire quest manager. It's only like 100 lines, but you can see this is pretty short. Like there's not that much logic in the quest system. And the quest system is unique because inherently the quest system, quest manager only has like three main functions. One is assign quests. The other one is increase quest progress. And the other one is remove Quest. So how the quest manager actually ties into other systems is by using event driven architecture. And this is great because Fortnite and Verse in general is already built on events. So this is basically the standard and just capitalizing on the best tools we have available. Okay, so in case you're unfamiliar with events, there's two main ways really to make a kind of quest system. One is we basically include a quest manager reference in every of our managers that, that is tied to a certain quest. For example, in the playtime manager, we could have something like a playtime quest. And in here, we would be monitoring everything like player playtime, uh, when the player join and all that playtime related stuff. So anytime something happened, then we can then notify the quest manager that say, oh, we want to increase this quest. In this case, this is a playtime uh, quest. So increase that by one or whatever. And then we do the same thing with the player manager. We basically want to have the player manager reference the request manager. Whenever an animation happens, then we tell the quest manager, hey, we want to increase this quest. So increase the quest, please. Now that's great. But the problem with this is that you can see that now pretty much every single manager in the game now needs to reference the quest manager for the quest to even work. For example, if we added something like a car manager and one of our quests was drive a car for like, or enter a car or something, then we need to notify the quest manager directly inside of the car manager that we want to increase the quest. And this is what's known as tight coupling, which means that for anything to work, we basically need references of every other system in place. And the bad thing with that is that if we ever want to change the quest system, like for example, instead of a increase quest uh, function, we have something like increment quest or whatever, right? We want to change that. Now we need to go back into all, all of our playtime player and car managers that all reference the quest manager because we need to change the name of the function from increase quest to increment quest. And that is a pain going back to all of those managers. So instead of doing it this way, what we could do is we could instead have the quest manager not know about any of the other managers. And conversely, we would have every other manager have zero knowledge on the quest manager. And the only way these two would communicate or any system would communicate is through events now so if you don't know what events are events are just basically something that signifies some change in state for example if you change your clothes then you could say that was a clothes change event if you ate then you could say that's an eat event and for example when a player gets eliminated that's an elimination event which fortnite again already works with nicely so this is a really good way to work so how do we actually transmit events and how do we listen to events so normally what you would have is something like an event bus or an event dispatcher which is just a central storage for every event in the game and you can have managers or systems either retrieve events from the event bus or you can have them publish events inside of the event bus that doesn't work too well with verse because verse is very strict on typing so instead what, what i do is i create this thing called a game services class and rather than having an, a generic list of events i basically just separate my events into whatever system i have so for example here i would have quest events i would also have things like player events so I more or less just separate my events into a little container just for ease of access and whenever a player gets eliminated and we register that in the player manager, we just forward that event into our game services class, locate the relevant event, for example, the player eliminated and just signal that event. And then any other manager that cares about that event is listening to that event and will then resolve that event. For example, a player gets eliminated, quest manager is interested about that event. So we await that event. And then whenever that happens, then we, then we would increase the quest progress. And the beauty of this is that the quest manager never has to know that the player manager even exists. This event can be coming from, I don't know, just the native creative devices or even just other stuff that is totally unrelated to the player manager. Our quest manager only has the concept of a game services class and then our player eliminated event. That's all the quest manager knows. And then it transmits its own events for any other manager who, again, doesn't know about the quest manager. So nothing knows about each other, meaning that if we ever want to refactor our quest manager or any other manager, in, we don't have to go back to every manager that references that system and then change the line of code here just because we change the functionality in here. This way, we've kind of decoupled all of our systems together. 
Also, I apologize for saying manager so much, but just trying to make a point here. And this also works really nicely with UI because if we have something like a UI manager, this UI manager never needs to know about the quest manager itself. It only needs to know about these specific events that it wants. For example, if our UI, we have a like quest UI class, we just kind of route the game services class into the UI manager. Then the UI manager would just listen to any events, for example, quest assigned or progress increased event. And then you would just uh, define something like a function called update quest progress. And then we, whenever we receive the quest progress increased event, we just forward that into our specific UI, which is the quest UI and update that progress with, with whatever data we receive from the quest. So as for the actual quest data itself or how we define quest, what I like to do is again, create a data table of all the quests in the game. And for that, we can then just pull that and assign quests whenever we want based on a specific ID. So for example, we have this uh, string ID, which points to this quest data, which is relevant to this playtime quest. You can see that I have a completion data array because what I want is I want basically tiers of the same quest rather than kind of defining the same quest again, like a uh, playtime quest, five minutes, playtime quest, 10 minutes. I just define a generic quest. And then I define an array here, which we can index. And, and based on the index, we define the quest here. You can see this clearly in the eliminations quest. I have an array of completion data. The first one being two points required, which is supposed to be 10, but it was just for testing purposes. And the other one's gonna be for 20 points required. And then we attach a reward to each quest data, an image, a reward image, and of course a point required. The actual hyper quest, the actual quest manager here really we only have a central event loop here. And this is again, where we kind of listen to whatever events we want. So for example, in this one, we listen to the game services, custom player events dot custom el elimination event. We then get the player who instigated that elimination. And from that, we, we try to increment the quest by one, let's say. Now, inside of the UI manager, I have again, this await quest events loop, which again, we await for every quest event that is gonna be relevant to us. That forwards information into our quest UI class, which is this one, I'll show you guys real quick. It's a really basic kind of widget here. Firstly, we have a stack of widget text box because whenever we assign a quest and we remove a quest, we're, we don't wanna render the quest if there's no quest. But we can have a maximum of three quests at once Right? But if we only have one quest, then these two shouldn't be visible. It, it doesn't make any sense. So what I did was I created a quest widget class, which basically represents one of these. And from that, we can set the quest reward, image, quest progress, all of that quest information. And then we can also show, hide, or clap. Now, important thing here is because we're using a stack box to kind of display all of these quest widgets, whenever you wanna hide a quest that doesn't have any quest information, you want to make sure that the visibility is set to collapse. If it's not set to collapse, what's going to happen is this is basically going to do like this, right? It's going to become invisible. But then if, if you're using widget number three and you're not using widget number two, then you can see that there's a gap here because this isn't technically being rendered, but it's still occupying the stack box layout space. So that's why you want to use collapse if you're working with stack boxes. That way you don't get this weird thing. And then instead you get this, the widgets kind of auto lay out each other. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. Again, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later. Take care, guys.